Greetings to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This morning, I want to take us to a passage of scripture in John chapter 12, verse 24 and 26. This is a passage of scripture in which Jesus was ready to give of his life as a ransom for many. And it talks about him being able to surrender his life so that we, his people, will be able to have our sins forgiven. And he talks about his own life as a kernel of wheat. It reads in verse 24, Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And Jesus was ready to give of his life as a ransom for many. And he continues to say, whoever serves me must follow me. And that's a very powerful and challenging statement. He says, for all of us who want to serve him, we must follow him. And if we begin to ponder about this in our lives as a single wheat, a single kernel of, of, of wheat, a single seed that falls to the ground, that surrenders to him, out of our lives, many, many new seeds will form. And this is the path of discipleship. You know, surrender is very much part of the heart of discipleship. Surrender prepares the posture of our hearts to follow Jesus. And surrender is an essential part of what it means to follow Jesus. If you serve him and you do not surrender, it is only the futile effort of man. And therefore, when I ponder upon on my own life, when I came to the place where I was 55, and I wanted to understand how God would take me forward in the days ahead. And I prayed, I waited upon God, and I wanted to find myself a mission statement. And you know why? Because I wanted the years ahead that remains to be productive. And this is the statement that God has impressed upon my heart. It simply says this, the fruits of my life will grow up on other people's trees. Wow. It just simply says that I would need to focus on other people. So it's not about me, it's about other people. And not only on that, but I need to invest so that they can grow. I need to water, I need to care, I need to help the tree to be strong so that the tree in other people's lives will be able to grow. And, and also, in order that they begin to bear fruits. How wonderful it is in the days ahead that we see people around us really being blessed and bearing fruits and, and, and being able to be so wonderful for the kingdom of God. And it is something that is of an inspiration and encouragement to me even as I move in the years ahead because clarity of purpose, clarity of understanding what it means to surrender our lives as a posture of our hearts, ready for the days ahead. It's very much the posture that God will ask for a disciple to be at. And as we begin to surrender our hearts and our, surrender our lives, I want to share with you three areas of surrender that God has enabled me to understand. The first is the word C-O-R-E, the core of my life. It, the core of my life is really the engine of my life. Meaning to say that from there, the core tells me what my passions are. What are the issues and causes that keeps me energized? What are the things that fires me up when I come out of the bed every morning? And, and to find that cause and that passion is to be able to uh, live and to die for is something that is very, very powerful. And, and I, I, I remember when I was in uni as a young man, uh, for whatsoever reasons, God placed into my heart a passion for the body of Christ. And ever since uh, the uni days, that has always been the passion that God has given to me. And so as part of the journey, I surrender this passion to him to be able to be his vessels for the body of Christ. And, and obviously, as part of the core is also my strength. The things I've become good at over the years and the training and experience that I have, 
the spiritual gifts and the skills and the aptitudes that God has given to me as part of my DNA and things that I naturally will be strong at. You know, we could use our strengths to do A, B, and C, and D, and many options. But because of this mission statement that God has impressed upon my life, the strengths are surrendered to Him for the body of Christ. And that, to me, is the, the mission statement that God has given clarity for me in the days ahead and I've... Uh, uh, after I've reached 55 and beyond. I'm not 55, but I'm beyond that. But it's a great journey to be in, to be able to find that the core of my life is able to be poured out uh, in as possible way as, as, as sharing uh, and ministering to the body of Christ. The second C that I want to share with you is the, the C of capacity. Capacity is about how we spend our time. You know, if we spend our time all by ourselves and, and focusing on our, ourselves and, or even focusing only on our families, we will end up not being able to have anything left to give to others. And so in the capacity that I have, I, I want to find time, the margin that I have in my calendar. And, and see how this can be given to the body of Christ. And so I think, I think even now it's a, a busy day every weekday, but because of the mission statement that God has given to me, the capacity that I have, I need to find the margins to be able to honor and serve Him and the body of Christ. And so that we need to find our own calendar and to discover and pursue our calling because if you do not allocate the time and create the margin, we will not be able to serve the Lord. And also the resources that God has given to me, it is place for Him to be used and, and to be able to find how we could use this to bless the body of Christ. And, and the capacity that I have also depends on the spiritual overflow that I have. You know, as, as serving God in different ways, we need to keep our spiritual tanks full so that it comes out as overflowing. And a life of sacrifice, loving God and loving others, requires us to, to find that depth and the strength from the Word of God, from the time that we spend with God, from the time we, 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 we reflect on God's prompting and what He's saying to us, that spiritual overflow becomes part of the capacity to be able to be a good disciple of Jesus Christ. We can only give to others what we have. And so as in this journey of discipleship, I trust that God will speak to us about allowing Him margins in our lives to put aside an important part of our lives to be given to Him to surrender so that the seed in our life will fall to the ground. And because it falls to the ground, many seeds will come forth. And then to use our resources and to be able to be in a place where there is a spiritual overflow. If we do not have that capacity to overflow and our spiritual tanks are empty, we will really over time run empty. And so, my brothers and sisters, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, we need to fill our tanks with the presence of God, the Word of God, the time with God, and the reflection and understanding the heart of God as a disciple. The third C that I have seen in my life in the way to serve is the word content. The word content is where you would serve. Where would you find your, your passion and where you will find your resources to put at? And for us as believers of Christ in FGA, I trust that that content will be for you and I to serve in the body of Christ in FGA. In different ways of service, in the life groups, in the home fellowship, but the point is we need to come to a decision 
where we would serve. Whether you would stay and serve in the home fellowship, whether you would join another ministry, or whether you would start a new ministry. But we all have to be able to find the content in order for the tree in other people's life to grow. And our lives also to be a tremendous blessing because if you pour out your life, others will grow. You know, serving Christ is, uh, is not about following our own needs. Serving Christ is not about following our strategies. But it's in this verse 26 says, whoever serves me must follow me. It's about following Jesus. Serving is about following Jesus. And such a tremendous journey as we begin to find the content in which we can serve. So for me, this mission statement of how it would be that my life will be a blessing so that the fruits of my life will grow up in other people's trees require me to consider my core, my uh, capacity, and my content. And to be obedient, to follow this in surrendering to Him. I just want to end uh, by saying this uh, and reading to you this powerful verse in verse 26 again. It says, whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant also will be. And so where the Lord is moving, we must be there. If you serve him, we need to know where God is working. And certainly God is speaking to us in our church that we need to be intentional disciples. Not just disciples for ourselves, but to be able to disciple others, to walk with others, so that we, our lives will be like a kernel of wheat that falls down on the soil, and as a result, many seeds will fall. And as we begin to do that, God says, at the last part of verse 26, it says, My Father will honour the one who serves me. Honour is not from man. Honour is from our Heavenly Father. At the end of life's journey, we want to be uh, faithful servants. How to be a faithful servant is to follow Jesus. And I trust that in this season where all things seem very difficult, all things seem to be changing all the time, all things seem to be uh, negative and, and so difficult and challenges to our circumstances, I pray that you will be encouraged that as you follow Jesus, God will honour us. As we serve Him by following Him, God will come and honour us in our own different circumstances. And that is His promise. So may God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. 